We're not politically correct, we just have common sense. Unscripted, unfiltered, unfaltering. Joy Supports Hunt for Heroes offers tributes and true stories of remarkable courage. If these terrorists could come in your bedroom and kill you, your wife, and your kids, and that's what these men are fighting to protect us from, these murdering idiots, and uh, they're taking them out so that we don't have to deal with them over here. Show of support started it all, just after the shock and awe bound the nation together. Now, years of footage portraying wounded veterans, deer stands, and standing ovations. Hunt for Heroes, that started as one man's way to say thanks, is now a series that many say is way overdue. <laughs> I ain't never felt like that before, and I want to feel that again. It's just a raw emotion. They left us being loved and being honored for the heroes that they are. We still have 40,000 injured troops. If you threaten our people and our way of life, we will find you wherever you may be hiding, in the place you feel most safe, and we'll kill you in your own bedroom. Thank you for being a country worth fighting for. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. It's going to take a while to get around to all of them, but there's no quitting. It'll never stop as long as I'm breathing. Your Support Hunt for Heroes is made possible through a partnership with Pioneer Natural Resources, Boss Blinds, Caltech, Tico Field Service, Double J Ranches, CBT Charities, and Christmas for our troops. Okay, push him forward. There you go. Get as far back as you can. Smile at Fill him. that camera up with horns. I couldn't oh, believe it uh, when I got up to it. It was just a beautiful animal. You punch him, Clayton. There you go. Uh, and just beautiful. the excitement was just unbelievable. It was, it was an awesome experience. Suck in your gut. We got the it. Yeah. Um, getting a shoulder mount. Bow up, man. Okay, Clayton, you need to get in here. It's and the hunt the guy that will always be remembered for the yeah, blast of ice and temperatures in the team. And the hunting camp that served as home for the duration of the time stranded in West Texas. We got the background. We got our girlfriends on our mind. The United States Marine Nestor Hernandez braves the bitter cold for his first mule deer buck ever. And it's a hunt to which he almost never arrived. When I actually left to go to the deer camp, it, it got worse and uh, couldn't see, you know, more than 50 feet in front of your vehicle. Slow pace going up and down these mountains. Um, but that didn't bother me a bit. I was more excited about getting there and, and uh, getting to hang out with all the guys and just going on this hunt. I'm just glad that no, none of my Marines died that day. We had 12 um, casualties. I wear this bracelet every day because he was, he was my best friend. Nestor did um, make it, and he holds a crowd of hunters spellbound as the story of his final combat action sent him home. Something about sitting around that campfire, you know, telling stories. Kind of felt like we were back in the day as it was anyways. You know, set up with the tents, you know, old style. Um, you had the chuck wagon behind us. It, it was, um, it was, it was different. That's it, Nestor. Yeah, That's this it. is the piece right here. Oh, just telling us the story. Did, did, yeah, he told oh, me. Okay. Unbelievable, brother. My doctor's yeah, recommending, awesome you know, work. me doing this as a, as a form of therapy. It was after a bad night, just kind of reliving, you know, some of the experiences I had in Afghanistan. And so the next morning I got up, went to an Aaron Brothers art store, picked up some paints, and I told her, just give me whatever I'm going to need. I'm, I'm a beginner. I'm not, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing, but um, I'm going to I'm gonna try this out. Once I got back, I wanted to do something just to kind of uh, reflect kind of what we went through over there. and What was supposed to be part of his and, therapy uh, opened up an undiscovered talent. And one Marine's work is now in hot demand in the art world. As show of support, Hunt for Heroes continues. Stay with us. For tonight, generally clear, cold, low, 11. Wind the storm is just part of a huge Arctic winter blast covering much of the United States. Major airport hubs backed up for hours. Now, if you don't have multiple layers on, well, you could put yourself in danger of frostbite. Water
on hypothermia. Now bringing a blast of Arctic air across uh, most of the country, almost no. It wasn't good driving conditions at all. I kept having to stop and having to bust the ice off my windshields because they kept building up. It, it was kind of scary sometimes. <laughs> it doesn't happen often, and therefore few are equipped for a massive winter storm in early December at the High Lonesome Ranch hunting camp. The guides, cooks, and hunters huddle around the campfire. As darkness falls, the already cold wind gets even colder, and it's been hours since anyone had heard anything from Nestor Hernandez. The entire camp braces for what could turn into a rescue mission. I know at one point I thought I was gonna be stuck out there and I was gonna have to sleep in my truck, and so when I finally you know, saw the lights of deer camp, it was, it was a good feeling. And as the worst weather hits camp, finally, so does the missing Marine who's been looking forward to this mule deer hunt for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and when I actually had the guys just greeting me with open arms, just like, you finally made it. And I was just so excited. It was almost like a welcoming home. No, thank you. Well, when they took me into the tent, I didn't realize we were going to be sleeping in tents. And then uh, it was like back in the day, cowboy style, you know, old tents and sleeping on the ground. And I was just happy to be there. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. As far as hunting experience, I had never really gone hunting. I thought we were going out there for whitetail and then when they were talking about mule deer, I had never actually seen a mule deer. I'd never actually even seen a mule deer mount. Oh my gosh, this is a beast of an animal. Nestor will never forget the frozen images during this long drive while looking for a big West Texas muley buck. Color and texture, nature's worst that create a stunning backdrop for a backcountry hunt. Nestor responds to the images differently. He's a person easily moved and easily inspired. So much so that out of the field, out of uniform, he is blending memory and inspiration to help the rest of the world remember. Remember the heroes, remember the mission. As far as painting and how it inspires me and, and drives me, um, when I first started painting, it was more of abstract, just kind of throwing paint on the canvas, and I wasn't really going in for detail. So when I actually paint, it makes me feel good, and, it, and, it's, and it's helped me. And so now, what really drives me is b actually being able to help um, my fellow wounded warriors, you know, out, that are out there, being able to, you know, donate, you know, some of these prints or original paintings to different, you know, just organizations or, or fundraisers that, that that people have, and that that money can actually go towards, you know, wounded warriors and, and different veteran organizations. Just being able to serve, even though I'm not still serving, it really means a lot to me. It allows me to forget about everything, whatever I went through. It was uh, October 5th, 2010. Next thing I know, I hear this, this like whooshing sound. I took three shots at him and he went down. And from there, pretty much all hell broke loose. More from decorated United States Marine hero, Nestor Hernandez and his studio in Texas. As show of support, Hunt for Heroes continues. Stay with us. therapist had recommended doing something you know just to, as an emotional outlet you know he asked do you write do you sing do you dance do you and then he mentioned art and I'd always kind of been intrigued with art and and did a little bit you know here and there drawing in school but it never was anything serious it wasn't until I got back to the States and uh, just had a bad night and just just couldn't get my mind off of it and so one morning I went over to the art store and walked in told the lady I've got five hundred dollars give me what I need I'm just a beginner sometimes the things that seem so natural can be hidden for years Decorated combat marine Nestor Hernandez never gave much thought to art. Never imagined one day he'd be mixing colors on a canvas. 
images born in combat. My mom actually told me, you need to show this stuff off. So she started posting stuff on Facebook and it's just kind of been a snowball effect since then. The Chris Kyle one, I did that one shortly after I'd heard about him uh, passing away. And so I, I actually ended up getting one of the, the patches he's actually wearing in that painting and just kind of a, just a, a tribute and memorial, you know, kind of to him. I did this one. Uh, I've got the Marine holding the uh, M14, got the red street going across and just kind of sadness really for, you know, the families back home, you know, thinking about us and worrying about us. And then this one up here, just kind of another loose interpretation that I wanted to do of, of a Marine and, and his canine and the dog handler. I know two canines that, you know, saved many Marines lives. And uh, so I just kind of did that one as just a tribute to, you know, the Marine and his canine. And then the one back here um, was a picture that I got sent to me. Um, and uh, this was actually, a, it was a photo taken of my squad several days after the, after I had actually got injured. I wanted to do something with importance and, and purpose in my life. I had family members that served, but no one in my family had ever served in the Marine Corps. Big explosion, really didn't know what was going on. Big explosion in the compound and I could hear my Marines yelling, okay, we're being attacked right now. And next thing I know I see an insurgent run in front of me and he's carrying an RPG. I took three shots at him and he went down and from there pretty much all hell broke loose. When I first ran in, one of the Marines, I could hear him yelling, help, help, and I took the first casualty, we took him out, and it was on my way back that I was running into the compound. I was rounding the corner and I was carrying one of the uh, gurneys, and the second rocket hit, and it landed probably about three yards away from me and I'm just kind of like is this really happening right now so they loaded me on the helicopter next thing I know I'm waking up in the hospital I had a, a grade 3 traumatic brain injury um, trapped on the left side of my body um, and then there was just like bits and pieces that that got hit but luckily I didn't you know I didn't lose a leg or an arm or anything. I don't have very good hearing out of my left ear. Ever since then, I mean, even with my artwork, you know, it's not easy selling art. It's not um, easy being an artist. You know, there's there's that saying everyone talks about, you know, being a starving artist. Um, but I've definitely been blessed through my artwork and being able to meet people. That's it, Nestor. Yeah, this yeah, is the piece right here. Oh, hey, buddy. Hey, tell us the story. Did, did, yeah, did he you? told oh, me. Okay. Unbelievable, so, brother. Um, awesome work. Took me about six months total to, to finally finish the whole piece, but that's what I had in my mind. I had dreamt about it. <clears throat> I always felt that, you know, God had his guardian angels looking out for me. And I mean, if I can do this the rest of my life, I'd. Oh, I'll be happy because this is my passion in life now and and what I love being able to do is you know donating stuff like this and helping other veterans because yeah, donated this to our event and it went for five thousand five thousand I, I was blown away yeah. I was like five thousand dollars I was like um, it was it was well, awesome good work know, it's just a really good feeling that they, that they appreciate it and that they know like how much of, of myself that I put into it so it's a good feeling knowing that it means so much to them that they're gonna cherish it out in any weather that, that's ever been that that cold. I remember waking up and I remember laying there for a little bit and kind of confused of where I was at for a second and why I was so cold. Um, I could hear the guys out, you know, they already had the fire going and I could hear them out there cooking. I could hear pans, you know, being hit around and I could smell something really good. It was just really a, a really neat experience of like seeing them actually cooking with you know on the fire and you know they had the chuck wagon and I mean every time we came in I was starving and so I never knew it was like man this food is really really good or I'm really hungry I think it was a little bit of both. <laughs> and 
cakes, coffee, and campfire biscuits, all prepared during an unexpected winter storm that would suspend so many hunts across this area of West Texas. But at the High Lonesome Ranch, oddly enough, in open jeeps, the hunters move out. Finally pulling out and going out there, it was kind of a surreal feeling to me. I kind of almost had to pinch myself because I was like, man, who gets to come out here and hunt like this? In the frigid morning air, Nestor rides with guide Clayton Wade Williams and expert spotter Sammy Lisson. Bitter cold made worse by a measurable wind chill and a coating of thick ice. It should make for a good hunt. Sammy and Clayton figure the mule deer have to move after the ice storm the night before. My first thought was, you know, this has got to be one of the, you know, worst ways to do it, you know, with this kind of weather. You know, I just couldn't believe it. The desert, a hero, and the winter cold. As show of support, Hunt for Heroes continues. Stay with us. Misery, it is said, comes in so many different forms. Only thing is, after being lost in the ice storm, Nestor Hernandez is on cloud nine. Even if it is 20 degrees, Clayton Wade Williams and Sammy Lissy always hunt for mule deer in open jeeps. It's the high lonesome ranch tradition that has gone unchanged for more than 30 years. Another tradition that has gone unchanged is big muley bucks. Sammy saw the buck and he was behind some, some brush and I couldn't see him at first. I thought he was joking with me. We bailed out of the Jeep so we could get closer to it. We couldn't get a really good look at it at first because it was just, you know, his, his back end sticking out. But ever so often I could see his horns sticking up over the brush. I knew he was huge. Once we came around and we could get a good spot on him, there was a doe just to the left, and uh, guys kept telling me, as long as that doe is there, he's gonna wanna stick around. I told Sammy, I was like, you just let me know when, you know, I got the green light. Um, he's like, you know, as soon as he turns, take the shot. I was like, all right. And it just seemed like it took forever. He was fixed on whatever he was eating. At this point, the sun rises higher revealing ice ushered in the night before. Clayton, Sammy, and Nestor don't seem to notice. They remain locked in on this buck, waiting for him to step out and turn. He's looking right over his shoulder right there, Bubba. He keeps looking down at this creek. And we got three, three does coming in right here. When he stood up and I saw how big these horns were, I couldn't believe that they were actually gonna let me shoot this buck. I was like, this is a big buck. Are you sure this is not one of your trophy deer that y'all wanna hang on to? And they're like, no, this, this one's yours. He stood up and kind of just stood perfectly and that's when I took the shot. Got him, got him, got him. Here he comes, coming to us, he's coming to us. Yeah, chamber another round, good shot, Bubba. Good shot. He ran maybe 20 yards and dropped. He's down. He's down. Yeah. Woo! That's a shot, Bubba. Good shot. 250 <laughs> yards, my friend. That wasn't an easy shot. <laughs> that wasn't an easy Thank shot. you, guys. Soto killer. Right? Good job. <laughs> that was awesome. Awesome. Good job. Good day. Were you nervous? A little bit. <laughs> I was just filled with excitement and just the anticipation to actually get over there and get my hands on him. That's a, that's a question I haven't figured out yet. How are we gonna get him? It was just that anticipation of just, I'm ready to, to see him you know, in front of me. And we were trying to figure out how we were gonna get over there because of where he was located. We couldn't drive, just drive over there in the Jeep. I mean, the closest we were gonna get was to the first fence. We finally pulled up to the fence. I mean, this fence was just covered in ice, just frost everywhere. And with that sun coming up, you really had to be there to experience just how, how beautiful it was. There's an old saying, a good hunt doesn't have to be a long hunt. It took Nestor Hernandez longer to get here than it did to find a good buck in these West Texas mountains. Well, as we finally got 
closer to the buck, I kind of had to tell myself to calm down a little bit because I was just getting so excited. I could feel my heart beating. There he is, I got him. As we walked up to it and just seeing how big he was, kind of took my breath away for a second. I was like, oh my gosh, this is way bigger than I had expected. Yeah. We were in no hurry to get back. And you know, with the ice storm and everything and me being the, one of the first ones to actually awesome. get the first buck, I was in no hurry to get back. You know, due to the ice storm, you know, we couldn't leave the ranch if we wanted to. So I wanted to, to make the most of it. I still can't get over how big he is. I can't believe the ice on there. I've never seen ice I've never, on there. Like I've before. never actually seen a mule dealer in person. person. Really? I've never seen one with ice on his horns before. I mean, that's cold out here last night. There's a good reason no one is in a hurry to get out of this remote desert canyon. The nearest highway is packed with ice, so Nestor Hernandez will be here for a while. But like they say in West Texas, if there's a campfire and plenty of coffee, there really is no reason to leave. It gives the folks out here more time to say thanks to a group of American heroes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, that's right, thank you. They may have been stranded by a winter storm, but at a place and a time like this, everybody here has found hunting's finest hour. You know, if I'm gonna be stranded somewhere, uh, it's definitely the place I would've wanted to have been stranded. You know, it's, it's an experience I'll never forget.